Armin Sayyidi is asking, I have a question, Armin. Are mm -hmm. Muslim Iranians who live in the West fundamentalists and extremists or liberal, genuinely speaking? Generally well, speaking. Well, generally, we shouldn't be generally speaking, <laughs> right? So um, we, I don't want to generalize um, Muslim Iranians, okay? But we, t we can talk uh, statistically. They seem to be a lot more liberal, but that is very skewed because why, why have they left? Like a lot of people, again, not all, okay? There are fundamentalists who leave, leave Iran. But a lot of the people who are motivated to leave Iran are motivated to leave Iran because not because of them not happy, being happy uh, mm -hmm. with living under very strict Islamic conditions, right? So also, so there's two, there are many, like recently this has been changing, okay? Recently, a lot of fundamentalists, because of the access to a lot of the wealth that they have had, they can, they get to leave Iran as well, right? But and also, like, if you look at a lot of people in the regime, their kids, like, study in Western countries, right? So, and they leave, live outside sort of the United States, but the, uh, li uh, sort of Iran. But those are a minority. But if you look at what's happening, like, in the past 40 years, most, in the past four, 43 years, a lot of the, m mostly the people who have left Iran are the people who are not okay with the Islamic Republic of Iran. And also, they are the people who have the means to be able to leave the Islamic Republic of Iran, right? So those two elements by its very nature is going to filter out a lot of conservatives. And it's gonna you know, screw the results in favor of people who are more liberal, okay? Because if you, most upper class, like not most, like upper class people, you're gonna see a lot more liberalism among upper class people uh, relatively to uh, to upper class upper class people in Iran relative to we talk India so much I'm not, I say upper caste the upper class people in Iran relatively are a lot more liberal to the lower uh, lower class people right and and also yeah so those two elements the fact that they're leaving Iran makes them more likely to be liberal and the fact that they have the means to leave Iran also makes them upper class which makes them again more likely to be liberal. But again, not all. I, I know there's a lot of very, very conservative um, Iranian Muslims outside of Iran. Um, like, for example, Daniel Hayagadju. Mm -hmm. I, this is anecdotal experience, but out of all of the Iranians I've met, either first generation or second generation immigrants, I've only met one that was actually a practicing Muslim and they seem to come from a very liberal family. The rest of them, I'm like, oh, what's your opinion on this? They're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, very bold. Some of the boldest <laughs> anti-Islam people I have ever met. <laughs> so. Right. And they're, they're not just not... Okay, so you're talking about Muslim Iranians, okay? Because you're not talking about a huge group of Iranians who are not Muslim, okay? Uh, so there's three groups of people, okay? We have Iranians, as Iranians outside of Iran, there's a lot of them who are Muslims, nominal Muslims, who are like liberal. There are a lower number of them who are, much lower number of them who are conservative Muslims. But there's also a huge group of Mus uh, Iranians outside of Iran that are not Muslim. Not only they're not Muslim, they've left Islam. They're more aggressively anti-Islam than any group of people I've ever met in my entire life. Straight sometimes, up. sometimes go beyond just being anti-Islam and be anti-Muslim, like to very aggressive ways, right? So you missed um, a group. What group? The group would be Iranians that left for their. They were never Muslims. They were from religious minorities. Like I know Iranian Jews. I know uh, right. Zoroastrians. Right, 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 right. Baha'is. Okay, there's also like a handful. Okay, this is very tiny. I don't want to, I don't want to highlight these people as if they're like a big deal. Okay, but I've noticed very few. Okay, like I don't know if there's more than ten of them. Okay, okay, but there's also a bunch of Iranians who noticed the woke the privileges of being Muslim among woke people. Okay, 
So oh, I know who you're talking about. They came, even though they're living in the United States, coming from a parent family that is not Islamic in any shape or form, they were like, there's privilege points here. Like, I like, didn't know to say. <laughs> They're like, hmm, I could grow a beard and I could act like a, I could like, 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 I'm not a, like, I could lean into this Muslim identity and these leftist cultures, this le leftist group will all of a sudden take me more seriously just because they want to be more diversified and they want to be more, exotic or like oh look we have this i don't know we have a trans person we have a gay people and we have our own muslim okay so we have a muslim here too so like maybe if i grow a beard and start using islamic words just in the middle of bottom like if i keep speaking mm -hmm. english and just throw in some islamic words like, like i'll just start and, speaking farsi and armin's like your accent yes yeah, all messed up <laughs> yeah no, Puya is like noticing that too. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not just me. Puya, by the way, is an Iranian outside of Iran, and Puya is saying he's noticing that too. Okay, and it's so amazing because they don't even—they're not even familiar with what they're doing, and they come off as very like, "You're not even doing it right." Okay, but but it's so amazing how you hear them say the things that it's a leftist perception of how somebody who is. Islamic in some way or form would say because they themselves are not very familiar with their own. I mean, they are children of immigrants who are complete, somewhat disconnected from that culture or want to be disconnected. Or from immigrated from that when culture. they were children. Yeah, so they're like, if they they act if they act up more from acting like they're from Iran, if an actual person who lived in Iran looks at them and like see what they're behaving and like. This is a, like a caricature of what somebody who has Iranian culture would look like. You know, like There's one specific like, person on YouTube you, who we watch I, and they got <laughs> the big beard. And you the, you know, say the funniest stuff. One, the way the person speaks Farsi. You're What's like, his name? Dr. Heem. Dr. Heem, uh, yeah. You're he's like, like he's if you saw his beard, even the religious people in Iran don't wear their beard this way. Like if people backing Iran, because he always flexes that he's an immigrant when he came when he was seven. But like, yeah, and all of his references are dated. And you're like, if people in Iran saw the way that you presented yourself now, they would trash you because you are like this big beard. You like, but he's, he's not they, part they would stereotype. They would stereotype yeah. you as trying to look Arab, and obviously, we know how that would be perceived. No, I mean, I, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, people like their beards in Iran because of like, um, but different styles of beard. But if they're like the anti, well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, I know, but like he leans into it in a different. It's not just about having a beard; it's just about the way he he keeps referring to it as if like, oh, this is like, oh, I look like a terrorist. Like he wants to be like, oh, look, I have the stereotypes of somebody who would be discriminated against because I come from Iran, right? Like he actively tries to look like that and then highlights it. Okay. Um, also, he's like plays into his the fact that he comes from Iran by like saying things in Persian and say, says them really poorly and badly but he like he knows his his community is not like an Iranian community his community is like progressive American Am yeah American and Canadian progressives and he wants to he seems like he wants to be accepted in the crowd by one of the way he does that is by constantly highlighting how part of this you you know, exotic, you know, Middle Eastern background that he is, even though he doesn't seem to be connected with that community at all, right? He seems like he's fully Canadian, right? Like he's more Canadian than, <laughs> like, than most Canadians, but like he was play, yeah, so it's, I don't know. It just seems like that, yeah. It's pretty funny. And this is obviously like something you can observe in tons of different diaspora communities. Mm. Um. Yeah. Anyways, um, I always thought that was so funny when you watch. <laughs> I cringe. So. Yeah, exactly. It drives you crazy. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're like, what are you talking about? We don't even act that way. What are you, what are you saying? You know, <laughs> okay. You're making it sound like I am a gatekeeping who gets to be. No, no, I'm, no, that's like, I, that's not what I'm saying. You know what I, like, it's not like, you know, 
I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, if you have a beard, you're acting like you're exotic or like we like I, who am I to say we? I don't believe in collectivism. I don't say we. OK, I say them like I don't even act like I belong to that group. Right. There's nothing. Pro there's no issue with just being the way you want to be. But I can see that it's not just the way you want to be. I can see that you're just like using it as a tool to be taken more seriously. Like I'm not gatekeeping. I, I never said we don't act like this. Like there is no we acting like this. Like we are individuals, right? There's no right way to be part of a certain group. Like that was not my claim. I just think like I can tell that this is a strategic identity rather than a genuine identity. I think, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I meant to say was like in terms of what he puts forward as a claim you're like i don't actually think that that's necessarily reflective it's not gatekeeping but uh, but obviously yeah. for you it's the inauthenticity that drives you crazy yeah but i just want to be clear because i never said we because i don't even see myself as part of the culture that i'm referring to so i wouldn't refer to it as we yeah but that, I just that wanted was just to be my clear. poor choice of words. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.